Welcome back to Art for OUR's uh, YouTube channel. This is Dan Priest, mild mannered foot and ankle surgeon by day, crazy wood turner by night. So, um, if you've ever been hiking in southern Utah or anywhere in the world that has slot canyons, I don't know if there are anywhere else in the world, but we're talking about these little tiny canyons that are super deep and very narrow at places you got to turn sideways to get through them They're usually carved out of sandstone by mostly water and some wind uh, wind erosion if you hike through them you see these funny little pockets where the walls wash away and you get these little pockets which will fill up with debris sometimes pebbles and boulders and for some reason uh, I got this image in my mind uh, to make uh, to make something that looked like that and eventually change shape but that's where I started um, on a side note I hear a lot of wood turners always asking what should I wear when I turn wood it gets the sawdust shoots all over it gets in your underwear it's always uncomfortable well somebody gave me this gift for Christmas um, it's kind of a polyester exercise long sleeve shirt that's got almost a turtleneck feel to it. It's very tight around the neck and the sleeves are very tight. So it's, there's no loose bit to it at all. And this thing is absolutely perfect. So just by chance, if you buy one, if you go to ourrescue.org, they have a bunch of sweet merchandise to buy t-shirts and that. They, you can buy one of those. And if you're a wood turner, it's the best thing I've come across yet. Anyway, um, so I had this design. I had this design in my mind of one of these slot canyons with rocks stuck in it. And I couldn't find a good picture of one, but imagine the pocket in the wall there full of pebbles. You see them all the time until you need a picture of one, and then you can't find one, of course. But anyway, so I'm going along making this thing, and, and I got these wooden balls that I ordered. I was going to make it myself, and I thought I didn't have enough time for that, and I wanted it to look really nice. So I started putting it together, and I realized that it kind of looked like the boiling effects of bubbles boiling up from the bottom of a pan. So one I did morphed into another idea, and as you watch me draw my design on the this birch wood, I changed the shape of it like twice because <laughs> I wasn't, wasn't sure what I was really going to do. I was just kind of going with this... Uh, abstract um, image in my mind and the end product is what came out of it one part that I really struggled with was the roof the top of it I didn't know exactly how I wanted it to look so I just kind of plowed f forth and kept you know altering it until I thought I had a pretty good design and then Towards the end, there wasn't much of it left at all, but I wanted some. I didn't want it to be completely uh, without some kind of top on it. Um, but if I were to do it again, I would probably put no top on it and just have these little balls filter into nothing so it looked like fizz coming up made of wood. But anyway, that's kind of how things came together. I, I usually have a pretty specific plan when I make a project, but for some reason on this one, I just... Uh, kept changing my mind and having different ideas and one thing I wanted to do is to keep the bark intact because I love this birch wood bark but only a little bit left survived by the time I finished designing as I was making which is a, a bad plan <laughs> um, that's a roto zip it's like a, a very powerful dremel it's probably 10 times more powerful than a dremel but not quite as powerful as a uh, a router uh, this is my <clears throat> beloved file sander, which really helps you get into tight corners. And then, of course, the angle grinder with a sanding disc. Also, I did the main carving with an angle grinder with the uh, carving disc, which is makes fast work of removing a lot of wood. So I bought these wooden balls from um, somebody online. I think it was just on Amazon. They were super cheap. I've got a ton left over, so... I'll be revisiting this idea again, I think, in the future. Um, Starbond is one of my sponsors. They provided a lot of the CA glue, which is fast, 
fantastic stuff. I like to use it to uh, fix different things like this. I mean, the idea here is you can stick it on and with the fixative, it sets up within seconds. So whatever you can dream up, you can stick it together. And I use, I'm using the core of my project simply to hold the, the external um, subject and usually works out really well. I had somebody make a comment that they were surprised I was wasting wasting so much wood on some of my projects. And the funny thing is, is I've got a I've got a, a pretty big backyard with lots of big trees, and I had an entire birch tree die, and so I've got a and a huge willow tree die, and a whole bunch of scrub oak. So I've got more wood than I will ever use. It's rotting faster than I can use it or store it. So. Anyway, don't you worry. There's plenty of wood that goes to waste without even turning it into anything great. I've <laughs> um, been using tuck tape lately to protect my tenon in case I get resin on it. In this case, I was going to put this in a pressure pot and not the, the um, vac chamber, which I usually do to degas my, my resin. But my goal is to put the wood in the resin in the vac chamber because it helps get the bubbles out of the wood and solves a lot of the bubble problem. But this project was too big to do that effectively. You need a lot of extra space above the project to allow the bubbles to rise. And I couldn't do that, so I just did a the pressure pot, which it worked out fine. But since I did this project, I've got a 15-gallon vacuum chamber and I'm going to be able to do much bigger projects and do that at the same time. So I'm pretty excited to try that out in my next project. Uh, Total Boat is my other sponsor. They provide resin. Um, I usually use this Fathom thick set re resin. It allows up to about three inches of thickness and pour. They say two, but you can get away with three if you're temperatures are on the cooler side and you're not um and you've got wood within the resin you know so it's not just straight three inches but you could get away with it and it's worked out wonderfully well so this is a five gallon pressure pot i usually run it at about 40 to 50 psi and the thick set takes excuse me the fathom takes about about 24 hours to set at room temperature uh, this time of year in Utah, in my garage, it's closer to 50, 55 degrees in my in my garage, so it takes a lot longer. It, I actually had to move it inside to get it to finish setting because it just wouldn't set up. Um, unfortunately, my uh, project kind of slipped to the side. It was really buoyant in the resin, so I had to chip out my tenon more than I wanted to, but that uh, tuck tape really saves the day. It protects it and... It's so important on a project like this that the tenon, the original tenon be used because if you make a new one and you're off even just a few millimeters, the top of the bowl will be off so far that you'll lose the, the subject the subject in your windows if you're doing it like I do, and um, it's a disaster. So it's really important to make a tenon early on, make your windows, pour your resin, and use the same tenon so it's perfectly lined up. I've learned that lesson the hard way. But yeah, this Fathom resin, deep set resin by Total Boat um, turns very well. It's not it's not um, advertised as a, a turning resin, but it turns great. I haven't had a single problem with it. Some people ask why I use gloves when I turn, uh, which typically is a dangerous thing to do with rotating power equipment. Um with resin when you're doing big projects unless you've got all day to turn it and make nice little ribbons um you you end up going through kind of a chip phase i think tim kim tippen called it that uh where you kind of just chip away at it and get down to where you need to and with these big projects you get some pretty big chunks coming off there and i've had it destroy my skin on my hands and create wounds and as a surgeon, I can't have that when I'm going into surgery. I can't have lots of cuts and scratches, you know, trying to have sterile hands in that. And besides the fact that I wash my hands like 
who knows, 30, 40 times a day between patients and that. And uh, it just, just just doesn't work. <laughs> you know, these little wounds never heal. So I just wear gloves and they're skin tight. They, they're very weak. So if they were, were to get caught, they should tear off really easily. I go through a ton of them because they're not very durable, but um, they're skin tight, offer some good grip. And uh, so far I've been been fine. When I get to this stage of the project where I'm going to hollow it out, I'm coming from the inside to slowly reveal these windows I've made. And you got to be careful because if you go too fast, you'll get right into your subjects, in this case the wooden balls, and it will be a total loss. So you have to go really slow, one section at a time. And one little technique I've learned is to put a really bright light on the side of the bowl. And if you watch close, you can see the light starting to come through. And when it's spinning at a thousand rpms um, you can tell where you're at and where you're getting rid of wood and so you can just slowly work it off until you get to the depth you wanted um, this is a carbide tip a negative rake a little round tip and it, it works nicely for just just slowly getting rid of the last few layers before it's uh, through what you need um, i one thing i i didn't work out the geometry very well in this project. The um, I didn't appreciate that the balls were going to get smaller the farther up we went and that my windows should have been shallower as I went. <laughs> I made them all the same depth. So I was realizing that I'm going to have to make the outer shape a little different. And because the little balls are only, I don't know, less than a quarter inch wide, and my depths were varied a little more than that. I ended up losing some of the balls as I was turning, but that actually made it look more like a boiling, fizzing look, have abstract look of the of these wooden bubbles coming up. So it actually worked out in my favor. But if I were to do it again, I would place the balls more randomly to give it a more natural look. And I would have made the windows exactly the same depth, but Sometimes the random randomness of it makes it look more natural, so my ineptitude lent to that. <laughs> um, if you're new to the channel, all of my projects are donated to artforour.org. It's a website I started with several other people, and we have about up to I think we're about 80 artists now that have donated wood turning and painting and jewelry and. We, we've got t-shirts and all kinds of stuff for sale, even freeze-dried treats. Um, all of the profit that we create goes to Operation Underground Railroad, which is an organization that fights child sex trafficking around the world. Uh, stateside, they help fund police departments uh, outside the United States. They coordinate with police departments and that and military and help do sting operations to free these kids from... Uh, a modern day form of slavery and it's it's a horrific thing but a mighty task for these guys it's very expensive and when a kid is rescued a lot of times they have to be put up for adoption because the family was involved in it and so another arm of OUR is an adoption agency which has placed I think they're close to 200 kids so far they rescued about 4,000 and the, the the adoption part of it's a newer part. They're they're realizing with every operation they do that these kids are slipping back into these situations. So the the aftercare has become a huge challenge to make sure it sticks, and that these kids have a gr a bright future. So anyway, that's an expensive process, and so I like to raise money for them. And this project's being sold at Art for OUR as well as all the rest of them. I have. A few paintings left. I don't have very much woodworking left. Most of it's been sold, but um, uh, I have a lot of other artist friends who've donated amazing work, and we'd love to have you buy something. And all of it, all again, like I said, the profit that we get from the website goes to Operation Underground Railroad. So anyway, thank you for dropping by coming up on the new year 2022 hopefully it's a little brighter and cheerier than the last couple of years have been with the pandemic and whatnot so thank you for support and for dropping by and hopefully we'll have 
newer, newer, more awesome projects in the future. So have a great one.